Today, I'm building a cold frame. We're having an unseasonably warm and sunny January this year, and I'm itching to get out into the garden. But I can't do any actual planting yet, so I decided to do a little DIY project to prepare for the gardening year. And I think this spot here would be the perfect place for a cold frame. Oh, look at this poor primrose. It felt the sun and decided to flower, but the nights dipped below freezing. Now its petals are covered in frost. Anyways, cold frames aren't actually that expensive, unless you buy, you know, the luxury versions. Generally, 30 to 50 pounds, euros, dollars should get you there. Cold frames are basically a box with a glass or plastic top to let the sun in. It's a few degrees warmer in there than on the outside, so you can start seedlings earlier, propagate plants you already have, and protect slightly tender plants over winter. I'm pretty sure my grandma had this exact one in the 90s. You can also use any shelf and cover it in plastic. This is likely the cheapest version, but you'll probably find it in the nearest hedge after a windy night, unless you remember to weigh it down or stake it into the ground. Another great thing about cold frames, and the reason I want one, is that they allow you to harden seedlings that you've started inside. I usually start seedlings on my windowsill, and some don't take the transition from a protected indoor spot to a cool windy spring garden very well. A few days in the cold frame will give them a chance to get used to at least the cooler temperatures. So you can buy one, or if you have some tools and some lumber lying around, you can easily make yourself a cold frame for free. I'm basing my cold frame on this old window that we had in the cellar. I think the people who lived in the house before us left it behind. It has a rim that will hopefully mean it'll make a good lid. I also grabbed these fence posts, but I didn't end up using them, so ignore those. The tools I'm using is the saw, which I know isn't meant for this kind of work, but it's what I have and I didn't want to buy a new saw that I'm not going to use all that much, unless I really do get into DIY, who knows. I also used a drill and some screws, 16 to be precise. First things first, I'm measuring the window so I'll know how wide and deep my box will be. Now I'm transferring those measurements onto the wood. Here I've captured the moments I realized that I didn't have a pencil. You're gonna need a pencil. Okay, I'm a bit of a dipshit who doesn't know exactly what she's doing, so I'm gonna fast forward through the, all the actual sawing. I mean, what's going on there? Why am I, why am I moving all over the garage? Ludicrous. This is the moment I realized that the leftover bits of wood were the perfect size for the short sides. The DIY gods were smiling down on me. I was actually so happy about this coincidence that I didn't immediately realize I only had two short side pieces and not the four that I need. But hey, counting is for nerds. This is me thinking about how to go on. If I had used a wider angle, you'd see smoke coming out of my ears. <laughs> Finally, I decided to lean into the rustic look and use bits of wood I had from when I cut back some shrubs in the garden a few years ago. I'm making the long sides first by screwing them to the branch. Try to go as much to the edge as possible as the short sides will get attached there as well. I first made some lead holes since the branches have a very tough center and the screws would get stuck. On this board I set the screw in the middle so that I can later attach the other sides above and below without the screws getting in each other's way. After finishing the long sides, I left it for the day, since it was Sunday and I had already made enough noise. Don't want to antagonize the neighbors too much. So, day two. Time to attach the other sides. Looking at this footage, it actually seems pretty dangerous, but just in case you're worrying, I did not hurt myself. But yeah, maybe follow some health and safety rules when you make your own version. Gloves, goggles, actually knowing what you're doing, all, all of that is good stuff. Oh, and I finally remembered to cut the missing pieces. Good job, me. And less traveling while sawing this time. Practice makes them, well, better anyways. So, attach the short sides so I have a sort of U-shape. Now is the exciting moment when I try to fit in the fourth side and find out if I measured correctly. And after only minor amounts of brute force, it fits. Mm -hmm. 
and the window fits as a lid. I'm really delighted and slightly surprised. <laughs> So I'm putting in the last couple of screws and the whole thing is finished. Now let's look at it in place. Once temperatures go up a little I might paint the cold frame to protect the wood, but right now it's so cold the varnish probably wouldn't dry for days. Perfect, just as I was filming the light was way over on the other side of the wall. Never mind. <laughs> so in conclusion, build some skills, plant some vegetables, feed yourself and your community. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe? <laughs>